Hello and a warm welcome to the Sweet Spot, your go-to golf tipping show brought to you by The Racing Post. It's Jack Reeve and it's Steve Palmer to look ahead to the Genesis uh, Invitational this week. Three tournaments to look back on last week. I suspect Steve Palmer is wondering how on earth we didn't find a winner and at least one of them. Is exhaustion setting in at this point, Steve? <laughs> I mean, you've had a busy few weeks, haven't you? You're absolutely right. Yeah, the frustration and exhaustion, Jack. I mean, uh, with a little bit of luck here and there, I feel we could have had all three winners last week. I know it's a bold thing to say when you didn't get any winners, but you know, Taylor Gooch was really unlucky and lived Las Vegas. He lost by a shot there. Tom McKibben played such solid golf on in Qatar, um, just couldn't get close enough to the pins on Sunday, couldn't hold a putt, finished fourth. And then Scotty Scheffler, I mean, he looked the likely winner of the Phoenix Open until he three putted the 13th green in the final round. Yeah, we'll, we'll come on to the Phoenix Open in detail. But Scheffler's missed birdie part of the 13th was a, was the key moment of the golf tournament for me. He traded at one to two on the exchanges and ended up finishing third. So, yeah, huge frustration, Jack. We move on. But place money uh, across all three tournaments, which is, is is good nonetheless. Let's start and live. We like chronology here on the sweet spot. So that is what we shall do. It was won by Dustin Johnson. Um, as you mentioned, Steve, it was close. We had Gooch. He came second in the end, um, wasn't it? You did um, pick up the team event winner, which is nice. And it, it feels as if you're uh, you're trending nicely in these live golf events. Um, DJ winning it, a, a blast from the past. Yeah, I mean, it didn't take long for DJ to, to find a groove, did it? He admitted, because we were talking about and speculating how long he took off in the close season, he admitted he didn't touch a club. Um, and then just before the Mayakoba event, he did a bit of practice. He was really rusty for Liv Mayakoba. His team, four aces, who have traditionally been the bosses of the of the Liv team events, they finished 12th of 13 in, the, in Mayakoba. Um, so really embarrassing for them. But then last week, you know, DJ's obviously practiced a bit more in between tournaments and he's got his game in order. He held a couple of really long birdie putts at the 15th and the 17th on Saturday. Um, then he got really fortunate at the 18th hole. It, was, it really wound up gooch backers because Johnson hit a, a horrible slice drive and then he got line of sight relief. You see, there was a digital mm. scoreboard uh, beside the green. So he was allowed to drop to the left until this, you know, out of the, the sight of this, this scoreboard. And that, that gave him an angle to the green. Um, and then he hit an excellent approach shot, which sort of ended the hopes of, of Taylor Gooch. But yeah, we must give DJ a pat on the back for his, for his iron play last week, really impressive iron play. And we always, go into the Masters looking for the players that are hitting their irons well, don't we? That's the key to success in the Masters. So, you know, DJ would be really encouraged with his iron play under pressure last week. Former Masters champion, of course. Um, stick him on your shortlist for Augusta. Yeah, class is, is permanent, isn't it? Talking about that sort of line of sight, I often think, it, granted, you know, these players are in a different stratosphere to the amateur, but it you do have certain aspects that are easy. I always think finding golf balls, is the, is the one because you've just got about 50 people just looking for your ball at every opportunity yeah. you know in the amateur yeah. game you've got three minutes on the road looking for this speck of white in a in a field you've got no chance no you're absolutely right you know the frustration of losing a golf ball when you're playing is, is huge you know i mean i i it's such a waste of life i you know when i get to the age i am now i, I really eager not to waste any moments of life so i don't even give it three minutes when i'm looking for a ball if i if i hit a ball i can't find it within 10 seconds or i get another one out um, but that can be an well, and you play expensive if... balls as well, don't you? I was going to say, I was going to say, when I'm feeling flush, I can do that. Sometimes, sometimes when I'm on a bad run, I will we'll spend a couple of minutes looking. But no, you can't waste. Yeah, it would be lovely to have an army of volunteers finding your ball for you, wouldn't it? But you know, do you give well, yourself line of sight relief? I was fuming when that because he it looked like he might bogey the last hole and then Gooch were getting a playoff with it. But yeah, it, it, immediately it was like oh, line of sight relief. Like, yeah, we don't get that either. There's no digital scoreboards where we play, is there? Um, no, no, absolutely not. It's um, it, it, it feels like you're seeing the ball big for in, in, in live, though, Steve. It feels like you're you're kind of finding the right um, patterns, let's say. Well, I feel bad for uh, for Sweet Spot viewers because we don't preview the team events on um, on Sweet Spot, do we? But uh, on RacingPost.com on Wednesdays, and then in Thursday's Racing Post uh, newspaper. Uh, we do preview the team events. And yes, yeah, Smash, I was really delighted that Smash got the business done there. I mean, Taylor Gooch, Brooks Kepka, uh, Jason Cockrack and Graham McDowell were the, were the team. Graham McDowell, very, very pleased to reward Brooks Kepka, who signed him over the close season. Um, so, the, yeah, the team events I have, a, have an interest in now. I think there are some angles in the team events. I just can't get them done quick enough for Sweet Spot. But keep your eye on RacingPost.com and, uh, and the newspaper, of course, on, on Thursdays. 
Yeah, no, a, a great nod for that. And uh, and plenty of sort of in-play tips from yourself, Steve, throughout the week, both online and in the newspaper. So if you haven't already, uh, bookmarks or racing post sport, be loads of goodies on there throughout the week. Should we head over to Qatar next? I don't think we should, actually, Jack, because I think John Rahm, we need to discuss John Rahm. Uh, <laughs> it, well, is, is it going to start with a, with a word beginning with S? <laughs> yes, shanky, 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 yeah. shanky. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, yes. I think we, I think we have to discuss it. I mean, I, I'm always keen, keen to get get onto the tips, but um, we mentioned Dustin Johnson's had a lovely warm up for the Masters. There, got a confidence boost in his iron play. Stick Dustin Johnson on your shortlist. Obviously, John Rahm will be on virtually everyone's Masters shortlists um, as defending champion. But yeah, I, I think his build up is going very badly, very badly. I mean, he, he hates live golf, doesn't he? There's no doubt about it. <laughs> He hates live yeah, golf. I think it's too early to say that, isn't <laughs> it? Does. No, no, I, I, I suspected he would hate live golf, and he does hate live golf. I mean, he, he was trying to get mobile phones switched off on Sunday. <laughs> he was demanding the fans put their phones on silent. Um, and like in the Mayakoba event, he was really unsettled by the galleries, the music, the live vibe. And he hit some shockers. I've never seen John Rahm hit such bad... Yeah, that, 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 that iron off the tee that he hit in Mayakoba yeah. when he had a chance to win, he hooked an iron into oblivion. Uh, off the tee and then at the 15th hole on Saturday in contention again and as you say yeah shank at the 15th so that's two of the worst shots I've ever seen him hit have been on this live circuit um, he was two over par for the final four holes in Vegas so in his first live event he bogeys the final two holes uh, to, to, to fade meekly in his second live event he's closed bogey par par bogey and finished eighth so really unimpressive start to live life. Yeah, yeah, early days, of course. Yeah, but I think he'll be pretty pretty cheesed off without going. But yeah, he probably gets home and just logs on to his Barclays account <laughs> <laughs> and it calms him down a little bit. But yeah. to, to, to be fair, I suspect there was more order in, in the live event than we saw in the Phoenix Open. I mean, we'll get on to that later, but I just oh. couldn't believe some of the scenes over there. I mean, sort of drunk Americans aren't the best audience for golf, are they? No, no, no. I think the Bud Lights were, uh, were coming into play there, weren't we? But yeah, yeah, we get on to the Phoenix Zone. But yeah, yeah, I just think John Rahm, John Rahm should probably be drifting for the Masters, I'd say, and Dustin Johnson should be going the other way. Mm, OK, um, keep that on your radar. Qatar Masters, it was won by Rikuya Hashino. Uh, he's won six times on the Japanese tour before, but it was his first on the DP World Tour. Won it by a shot. Now, Steve, I was there were real mixed emotions here for me. We obviously had Mr. McKibben and, and we wanted him to win. And I, yeah. once he, you know, a few holes out, it, the, the kind of dream was over there. So attention firmly shifted to making sure that your good friend Ugo didn't win. <laughs> you put him up on the previous week's sweet spot. Was it 250 to one? Or something yeah, stupid? yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I know. Relief, and, relief. Yeah, and yeah. lured us in there. Went off 150 to one for the Qatar Masters. And I must say, at points, I was thinking, oh no, he's going to win. <laughs> you were thinking it was pile on time, <laughs> weren't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I, obviously, Ugo was really distressing me. Um, yeah, it, it would have been nice to have been on for the each way payout. As you say, 150 yeah. to one. We had plenty of juice in now. I should have stuck with him. You know, he clearly likes desert golf. Clearly, a really good player. I mean, the way he was swinging when it was windy on Sunday, he was he was so measured at times. Um, he's definitely the best Ugo in the world. Um, I, I think there's no doubt about that. But yeah, we're keeping an eye on Ugo Casaud. Um, and we're keeping an eye on Rikuyu Hishino because mm. so solid when he hit the front. You know, he didn't give any sort of um, encouragement to the to the chasing pack. As soon as he got in front, you know, he, he, there was only one player on the whole field who hit more greens and regulation on Sunday than, than him. Um, mm. You know, he's bogey free on the back nine. You know, your classic Japanese temperament. You know, yeah, ice, I was going to you know, say, yeah. Cool as a cucumber. So many of the Japanese have just got ice running through their veins, haven't they? You know, he's a, he's won six times on the Japan Tour, and now he's a DP World Tour champion. I must say, Steve, as a, as a huge advocate of the well, what was European Tour and now DP World Tour, I'm struggling to to kind of get excited for for some of these events. I mean, some of the, the field was so weak, and I, I think we head to Kenya, don't we, in a couple of weeks' time? There's a break this week, and I'm hoping I feel revitalised for that because I want to be supportive i want to feel good about the dp world tour and i switch sort of sky on in the morning sometimes and see that and go oh, here we go again it's difficult when it's a triple header week as well though isn't it when you've got the pj tour and live golf going going up up against the dp world tour it makes it more difficult i think so i think you will get your spunk back um <laughs> but um yeah there's a big debate raging at the moment you know which is stronger the pj tour or the dp world tour you know uh, sorry the bj tour or the live golf circuit mm. um pj and live you know they, they, you look at the live leaderboard and it's packed with you know major champions world-class players now um 
you know, it, it's, it's a big debate we're having now. Yeah, a couple more signings from Liv and mm. um, yeah, they may become the, the stronger tour. But yeah, obviously DP World Tour is getting left behind, unfortunately. But we'll, we'll always love it. We'll, we'll, yeah, as punters, we always love those sort of low grade events when you can find an Ugo Casaud. Um, makes it even more impressive, Steve. So many players to stay across and to pick out. Ugo was uh, was mightily impressive. Let's take a look at the Phoenix Open. Uh, it was won by Nick Taylor in a playoff. Once again, what we six PGA Tour events into this season, it's incredibly difficult to kind of predict the the, the winners at the moment. And um, well done to, to Nick Taylor who got it done. I must say, we were obviously on Scotty Scheffler. You were incredibly confident about him. You said he wouldn't be out of the each way places. You were right on that. Point. I think did he hit the front or or get at least tied yeah. for, for the lead and, and I eventually had to retire um, and I just assumed he'd go on and win. It wasn't the case. Is it harsh to say that it was the putter that let him down again? Well, if he had hold that birdie part of the 13th hole in round four, I think he would have won. It was an absolutely crucial moment because of the, the knock-on effects it had from there. He had a makeable eagle part of that 13th hole. You know, I thought he was going to make an eagle. He comes up short with the with the approach putt and then misses the birdie putt. Then he hacks his way up the 14th because he's absolutely fuming, misses a short par part of the 14th, has to get super aggressive on the chip at 15 because now he's hunting eagles. Uh, then he missed his, his birdie putt at 15. So uh, you know, at 13, 14 and 15 was the three hole stretch that killed him. Three short putts slid by there. Three fives in a row went on the scorecard and he lost the tournament by three shots. I mean, he went par bogey par in those holes. I think if he holds that birdie part at 13, he goes birdie par birdie and wins. Yeah, very fine margins in this game. But yeah, as you say, yeah, thank, thank go this way on each way. Yeah, you didn't lose if you're on Sheffer each way. He went odds on. He did it at the front. He went odds on. He, yeah. he traded at 1.45 on on the exchanges. Yeah, you could you could have got out with a healthy profit if you had a decent stake on on Scheffler. Um, yeah, I've got no regrets. I've got no regrets, Jag. I think it was a. I think Scheffler was the each way bet of the year. I, I, I don't. Um, yeah, I got a free bet out of that. You know, Justin Thomas backers no return. Max Homer back is no return. You know, no regrets, no regrets. Well, if we if we'd have said to you, Steve, you know, you'd have Sheffer in uh, at the front on Sunday um, when yeah. you put up the bet, you would have taken it, wouldn't you? Um, absolutely. So three holes, three holes, which was absolutely agonising. You know, I, I, I yeah, that I, I, I could talk about this. This would be good therapy for me, actually, if I could talk about that birdie part on the thirteenth for the next. 10 hours have you got 10 hours to spare um because i could not when that birdie put me on 13th like yeah it was like boom yeah you know, i was convinced he was going to win and then i was thinking oh right now he might not um, what's your what's your process um i mean you've been doing this for, for so long and there's been heartbreaking golf bets um you know mm. along the journey what's the process for you when you see something not quite go to plan and you're at home probably a late evening most of the time like is there have you got a process in place to to minimize the damage on your brain well i'd already had a few tinctures by that point so i was, I was reasonably calm i just opted for silence there uh, some som <laughs> somber moments of reflection and silence but i'm a very resilient character jay you haven't got to worry about me i mean mondays i just process things on mondays and then tuesday as you can see i'm, I'm bouncing again i'm i'm looking forward to the future so yeah yeah even the most resilient characters in the world need time to process things um so yeah yeah sunday night and monday are normally the time i, I need to process then tuesday i'm all yeah you know, I'm, I'm feeling good again yeah i'm hungry um i'm excited about the weekend it's a relentless game, I must say. I, 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 we have to speak about, you know, the, the fan kind of disorder, Steve, because, uh, you know, I know we celebrate this tournament because of the sort of party atmosphere, but some of the videos I saw coming out of this place, and I think they, they, they stopped the alcohol sales on the Sunday. I think they stopped, or well, they closed the gates far earlier for, for spectators than they were planning on. I mean, that's not what we want to be seeing at all, is it? Well, it's just one tournament of the year, isn't it? You know, this, this is the the one tournament where it's a party, you know, mm -hmm. and, the, and the players who enter it, they know what they're going to get. You know, it's going to be crazy. It's it's um, yeah, the, the, the highest attended event of them all. Um, if you don't, if you're not up for that, don't enter the golf tournament. That's the way I see it. I mean, I I, I don't yeah, I, I don't like seeing Billy Horschel shouting at spectators. Um, you, you know, think just, it's justified just... though, Steve? I mean, it is. You know, it is their well, Billy, job. Billy... And... Yeah, I know, I know, but what a bloody good job, you know. Billy <laughs> Billy Billy Horschel was shouting. You know, it was just our job, and I said, well, they're probably thinking, well, good for you. I'd love to have that job. You know, I'd love to have that job and have people shouting at me and and winning millions of pounds for for it and yeah you know, for doing leisure. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I just I just think, yeah, and Zach Johnson, I don't know what's going to Zach Johnson. I, we don't even know why he started shouting. I think there was some Ryder Cup chat. Yeah. Obviously, obviously his, his reputation is, is, is just not a very good Ryder Cup captain. Maybe some Yanks, beard up Yanks were having a go at him for not being a good Ryder Cup captain. He's lost it. But, you know, Zach Johnson's a man of God. He, he should he should rise above all that. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I have a contradictory view to a lot of people. I know a lot of people are siding with your Horschels and your Jack Johnsons. But I, I just thought, just ignore it. You know, no matter what's being said, just rise above it. You're in such a privileged position. Um, yeah, I've got I've got no time for the for the moaners. Mm, OK, I wasn't expecting yeah. you to say that. Um, let, let, quick word on Nick Taylor. Um, one in a was it one in a playoff last year? Canadian Open, was it? He, um, he, um, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, he won the Canadian yeah. Open. Yeah, yeah, he really gutsy in big moments. Yeah. Right? yeah, Nick Taylor. I've been guilty of underrating him in the past. Yeah, we need to respect his his, his guts. Uh, yeah, he won that. He won the because remember the Canadian Open hadn't been won by a Canadian for yeah. many a many a moon. And then you know he 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 delivered in front of a crazy you know crazy gallery. It's brilliant what he did in, in Canada. And then you know he stepped up when needed in Phoenix on Sunday, didn't he? You know he he was well behind Charlie Hoffman going into those last few holes. Um, and he's a world number one amateur. He's a former world number one amateur. Jack is Nick Taylor. Um, <laughs> so I mean, what did you expect? You, you I know you've got huge respect for former world number one amateurs. So <laughs> I expect you were piling in and running. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure whoever the admin is of the Sky Sports Golf account has been watching this and trolling me because there was two posts last week about Hishino being the former number one. No Nakajima, world amateur. wasn't it? Nakajima. Nakajima. Nakajima <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure Hishino has been as well. <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> I'm sure he has been at some point. <laughs> no, Nick Taylor was really, really good amateur. And now he's a four-time PJ Tour champion who we have to respect. And I was pleased he beat Charlie Hoffman. Again, I have the opposite view of a lot of people who are getting all excited about Charlie Hoffman. Oh, oh, this lovely, fluffy underdog. They're just forgetting that he was horrible about the PJ Tour when the live stuff started. Mm. Yeah, you know, When live started... Charlie Hoffman was really critical of the PJ Tour. He was Phil Mickelson's little helper, you know. Um, yeah, but people have forgotten everything Charlie Hoffman said. You know, it was Sergio Garcia who was giving the PJ Tour loads of stick. Charlie Hoffman was giving the PJ Tour loads of stick. Phil Mickelson, obviously the 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 leader of the pack there. And um, yeah, you know, I couldn't I couldn't share in all this love for Charlie Hoffman. Yeah, you know, a, a, a 999 to one chance on on the exchanges as well. You know, so for punters. I had no interest in Charlie Hoffman winning. <laughs> a, a few people would have backed Nick Taylor because he, he was Phoenix Open runner up last year. Um, so, yeah, I was cheering on Taylor over Hoffman just because I, I couldn't have this this love for Hoffman. He's, he's not as not a not a fluffy underdog. Well, it's clear it? it's clear you've, you've nor forgiven or forgotten in, in the in the case of Charlie. Hoffman. I mean, yeah. you must have been thinking at one point, Steve, you know, I've. I've Everything that I predicted has happened with Scotty Scheffler to an, to an extent. And now he's going to be beaten by Hoffman. I mean, the oh. golf betting is just ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. My wife would join me on the sofa for for a, 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 about half hour of that golf tournament on Sunday. And um, when Charlie Hoffman was hitting the front, she was going, who's that? Who's that? I said, he can't win. He can't win. Don't worry. He can't win. Don't worry. He can't win. Don't worry. He can't win. And he's got like three shots. Don't worry. He can't win. Three shots ahead. Odds on. Um, so I was right in the end, but... Um, how does yeah. the how I've, I've always wondered this thing. How does the um the sort of remote control situation work at your house? I mean, have you got like multiple TVs? Because you, it seems like you've always got the golf on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got upstairs and downstairs, but the upstairs yeah. facility is much smaller. You know, very small screen, which I don't like because my eyes are so bad. So if I get banished to the upstairs one, I have to basically perch on the end of the bed and just stare at it from like a <laughs> you know, half a yard. Um, so I thought about I getting your eyes tested and getting some specs. Well, I had lasers, didn't I? The lasers have oh, worn off. Yeah, I had yeah. lasers, you know, I don't know, was that 20 years ago? And they've worn off and now I am I am blind. So Can I, you, you know, re-laser? Well, this is this is what I need to look into. Yeah, the next time I get a nice return, you know, that's confidence. Yeah. Next time I get a big bumper payout, <laughs> confident that's going to happen before I die. Um <laughs> I will get get the lasers looked into. Well, we'll we'll go together, Steve, because I'm I'm looking into it. I mean, it's it's horribly expensive. Um, because I, I I don't mind wearing glasses, but it's it's when you like play football. And I tell you the really tricky thing. I've started to play snooker again, and it is it's obviously impossible to play with glasses on. I need to get some yeah. Dennis Taylor glasses. <laughs> um, but the the miss isn't isn't letting me invest in in a pair of those. Um, <laughs> You're right. Snooker is difficult on the long pots, isn't it? Yeah. You can't see. You can't see the ball you're potting at. You've just got to go on muscle memory. 
Um, but um, yeah, yeah, we need to get our eyes sorted. It, it, it's not as expensive as you think. I don't. I don't. Yeah, oh, it's worth. It, it well, it, it's, it's the best invest. Put it this way: it's the best investment you can ever have. Yeah, being able to see is well, worth you, so you're much blind more. Again. Well, I'm going to get it done again. I'm going to get it done again. I can't wait to to get it done again if it's possible. Yeah, you know, some you know, Ewan Ferguson, who we often yeah, backed, and he yeah. threw the French Open away when we were on him. Um, he's he has to wear contact lenses, and he's been mm. having problems with his eyes, and the contact lens is causing him stinging eyes and stuff. Um, so he maybe is not able to have laser eye surgery. There's certain people that can't have it, and I tried contacts, never again. Absolutely hated them. Just could not get on with it. Anyway, <laughs> enough about our eyesight, Steve. This is turning into sort of an optician <laughs> therapy session. Um, well done to all of the winners and, and those that found the winners last week. We shall go again this week. Just the one tournament to preview. It's the Genesis Invitational. It's at Riviera Country Club. Talk us through the layout, Steve. Yeah, specific Palisades, California. 7,322 yards, par 71, three par fives. Riviera has been used for this event every year since 1970. 73, apart from 1983 and 1998. It's also hosted the 1995 US PGA and the 2017 US Amateur Championship. The defending champion is not here, of course, John Rahm. In fact, this is an amazing stat. Eight of the last 16 winners of this event are now live golfers. Um, so really? it, there's hardly any course winners in this field because of that. You know, your Bubba Watsons, your Phil Mickelsons, Adam Scott and Max Homer are the only course winners in this field, despite this being used for so long. Uh, the weather forecast is great. You know, the, the PJ Tour bosses must be pulling their air out. There. Yeah, the, the, the weather's been terrible on the PJ Tour this year, but this event should run smoothly. Sunny and calm throughout. You want strong ball strikers on your team. It's all about greens and regulation again this week. Ideally, you want faders, right-handed faders. The shape of the course uh, suits suits faders. Uh, but most importantly, you need course experience, Jack. Only two of the last 21 winners had played fewer than four tournaments at Riviera prior to their victory. Um, and a field of 70 go into post this week, Jack. It's an elevated, designated signature event. 3.6 million go into the winner. And there is a halfway cut. It's, it's very, very quirky, this um, Tiger Woods is the tournament host, of course. I was um, going to say, how long was it going to be until he mentioned Tiger? <laughs> Far longer than I thought, actually. Well, he's big on <laughs> he's big on cuts. I mean, there's all this controversy over whether there's going to be cuts in these elevated, designated, limited field events. And Tiger Woods is big on cuts because he never missed a cut. Did he? Yeah, I, I, I know he literally did miss one or two, but yeah, his cut record is unbelievable. And he, yeah, the idea that he's just going to destroy cuts on the PGA Tour. He was never going to do that. But this is such a hard cut to miss. You, you'll be very gutted. Yeah, the top 50 plus ties get in. It's a 70 man field. The top yeah. 50 plus ties get in, plus anyone within 10 shots of the lead. So, um, yeah, we're going to have oh, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you miss the cut in this, you hang your head in shame. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, well, I say hopefully we may restore some form of order to the PGA Tour. It, it may well be slightly easier. Um, to find the winner. Um, Steve Palmer, how many selections for this tournament? Three. Three selections. Let's run through the, the top of the market before we get your selections. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, that we were so keen on last week, is 7-1. to one. Rory McIlroy, 10. Jean de Chauflet, 14. Alongside Victor Hovland. Justin Thomas, 18-1. to one. Ludwig Eberg, 18-1. to one. Patrick Cantley, Max Homer, same price. Bigger the rest. Are we going near the top of the market or are we avoiding them, Steve? <laughs> Um, going quite deep, actually. And, yeah, there's, there's a, the, all the market leaders, whether well, five of the market leaders I don't like. We discuss, okay. we, we discuss those five, the top five in the bet, and I don't like. Um, so I'm just below it. OK, we'll do that at the end. Why you don't fancy them? Who is your main selection for the Genesis Invitational? It's Patrick Cartley, 18 to 1, who is playing on his favourite golf course this week. He adores Riviera Country Club. He went to the University of California in Los Angeles he knows Riviera like the back of his hand. He's a Californian teeing up in his home state this week. He's already won a PGA Tour event in California. He won the 2020 Zozo Championship at Sherwood Country Club. He was runner-up in California in the 2021 American Express. And in this particular Golden State gathering, he has featured on this leaderboard a lot. He was fourth in 2018. Great effort. Three shots shy of the winning mark. He was 15th in 2019, 17th in 2020, 15th in 2021, 33rd in 2022, and then third last year. He carded four rounds of 68 or better last year. I think it's only a matter of time before Cartley wins this tournament. I think it might happen on Sunday. He's made a steady but 
spectacular start to the year. You know, I, I, <laughs> unspectacular. That was some mouthful, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a long word, isn't it? A steady but unspectacular start to the year. And I wonder whether golfing politics has dragged him down a bit so far mm. this year. He, he, you know, he's on the he's, he's on the PGA Tours policy board. Mm. And there's obviously of course he is. I mean, if there was one person to be on that, it's Patrick Cantlay, isn't it? Well, apparently, he's brilliant. He's ruthless on it. By, all, by <laughs> well, according to Jordan Spieth, he, he doesn't say much. But what he says, he, he doesn't do pleasantries or niceties. <laughs> really, just cuts to the chase. Um, and you know, Jordan Spieth absolutely worships him for his his work in those meetings now. Um, but the PGA Tour, of course, have just made a big breakthrough in making this signing with SSG. Um, mm. And yeah, and, not and, not our not our uh, employers. SSG. No, 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 not Spotlight Sports Group, um, but uh, Strategic Sports Alliance. And that, yeah, that's a huge weight off off Cartley's shoulders. There, um, he's got this alliance with Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas. Yeah, it's all mates together. They're happy for the PGA Tour to go it alone without the the live guys and without Piff involvement. They think this three billion dollar deal is going to get the job done. Spieth has been so complimentary about Cartley's role in all this. Yeah, Rory McIlroy is on the other side of the mm. of the of the argument now. It's, it's, it's amazing what's happened. McIlroy wants the live guys to come back. Um, Spieth, Cartley, Thomas don't. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think Cartley's in a great mood now. Yeah, the PJ Tour is developing how he wants it to. He skipped the Phoenix Open last week to freshen up for Riviera. I think that was a great move for his Riviera chances. I mean, you he, he would have seen all the all the weather delays. You know, Scotty Scheffler playing a million holes on on Sunday. You know, a lot of his rivals were burning themselves out in Phoenix on Sunday in that bear pit atmosphere that you you mentioned. Uh, Cartley's got his feet up, laughing his socks off. Um, he finished 11th at Pebble Beach in his, his last event. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, serious title tilt come. Yeah, we mustn't forget he's a former world number one amateur, um, former former FedEx Cup champion, seven-time PJ Tour champion. So, yeah, we, 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 yeah we're going to get back-to-back former world number one amateur winners on the um, PJ Tour. I think that was the greatest um, description of Patrick Cartman I've heard. Steady but unspectacular. I think that sums him up beautifully, not just this season, <laughs> but it, I mean, he's all, he's just such a kind of ploddy type character, isn't he? He's an absolute machine, isn't he, in life? He's one of life's machines. But, um, you know, you, 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 you swap with him in a heartbeat, wouldn't you, Joe? I know you're, 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 I don't know, it's a, you're a happy man, but, um, you know, he, 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 he's a machine that's doing well, isn't he? He's a machine <laughs> yeah, that's doing yeah. well in life. And uh, a, we, yeah, we're going to love him. We're going to love him on Sunday. Yeah, but one of those, yeah. Patrick, I mean, there's not a lot more to say about. But to talk about his Ryder Cup performance, Jack, if you wanted to, yeah, some more to say, yeah, you know, how yeah. gutsy was he in the Ryder Cup there? Yeah, you know, everything was gutsy. Yeah, yeah, you know, that that moment where he just suddenly turned it on, hole in everything uh, in a crucial match, and then it all kicked off with his caddy, didn't it? Joe Lacava and um, had a had a shouting match with very, he's waving his hat and whatnot. But you know, easy to forget during all that furore. That um, you know, can't they played amazing golf at you know, in the highest pressure imaginable? Yeah, no, I th- he's got that nasty streak in him that you that you almost need, hasn't he? You know, he, he's got that yeah. ability to turn nasty when he needs to. That all you know, elite sports people do. Yeah, um, and he, yeah, he's won the FedEx Cup. How many players have won the FedEx Cup? Yeah, he he, he 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 loves money by all accounts, and there's plenty of money up for grabs this week. Yeah, three point six million dollar check. We'll get the focus of Cartley, and yeah, yeah, I think this machine is gonna is gonna win. Okay, great stuff, Patrick Cartley, the main selection for the Genesis. Who's up next? Next best is Colin Morikawa at twenty to one. You know, Cartley and Morikawa were the best value by far for me. Rock solid each way bets. Morikawa, born in Los Angeles, went to the University of California. This event means a lot to him. The course is ideal for him. He's guaranteed huge support every time he turns up there. We mentioned how helpful a fade is around here. Morikawa's natural shot shape from the day he was born is a lovely controlled fade. He's always seemed destined to become a Riviera champion. He first competed here in the 2017 US Amateur that we mentioned. He finished eighth in the stroke play section of the event. And then he went to the last 16 stage of the uh, of the knockout. He lost to Kevin Yu, actually, who's, who's mm-hmm. also playing this week. Keep an eye on Kevin Yu. Um, so Morikawa showed an early liking to this track. Then in, is, is, his Genesis form figures have been 26, 43, 2, 6. 
Wackham Neiman was the only man to beat him in, in 2022. Um, mm. No Neiman to worry about, of course, this year. And Morikar is in fantastic Nick Jack. He was the fourth best scorer in the Tour Championship in his final event of last season. Then he went on to win the Zozo Championship by six shots. He was seventh in the Hero World Challenge, fifth in the century. Missed the cut by a shot in the Farmers. Tory Pine South got virtually waterlogged. It was a real slog for him in the end. Then he was 14th last time out in the Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Swinging great, massive opportunity. Won the 2020 USPJ in California, Jack. Let's not forget, I can see him winning a seventh PJ Tour title in his in his home state on Sunday. And lest we forget, final point, lest we forget, lest we forget, really crucial point this, Jack. You probably would have made it yourself if you'd had the opportunity. He's a former world number one amateur. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he spent he only spent three weeks as a as a as, as a world number one amateur but it, it i counts. am i am convinced at this stage all of your fine work and and research is thrown out of the window you go down the list who are the world number one amateurs and just tip them blind at this stage well, I, th I think that's what uh, we've got to steve ah uh, no, no no i just love it i love this uh this theme we've got of winding you up with these poor people. but yeah currently morikawa two of the best golfers that california has ever produced um they'll both be popular winners this week um, just just in terms of, of morikawa and you mentioned that major win back in 2020 remember it really vividly and I, and I think that all of the chat at the time was like this guy is gonna properly kick on and become one of the world's you know best and, and he is that of course he is yeah. but i'm not i'm not gonna say it's been disappointing since then but i expected him to do more is that a fair yeah. assessment yeah, but it, probably because you didn't expect him to do so much so quickly. It was incredible, yeah, wasn't great. it, to win yeah. to win two majors that quickly? Um, it was it was a phenomenal start to his career, and um, yeah, you know, he's entitled to have a a year or two not sustaining that pace. But I'm I'm, I'm really excited about how he's been swinging it lately. He, yeah, yeah, he's got that got that baby fade, um, absolutely purring again. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Morikawa was difficult to ignore this week, and uh, yeah, you 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 watch that crowd get behind him when he's he's out there. Yeah, when he finished second behind Wackham, uh, he's come mm. with some late rattles here, and the crowd's got right behind him. He's very very popular character in these parts. I think it could be a, a joyous week in the in the in the Golden State sunshine. Yeah, I mean, in terms of textbook golf swings, here's exactly that. So we've got Cartney, we've got Morikawa, we've got one to go. Who is it? See Woo Kim, my lord. Oh, yes. Go on, give us a full rendition. One. Go on. <laughs> Well, give me time. Give me time. He's the best outsider for me. He's a four-time PGA. Kim. You forget. I mean, we talk about forgetting things. You forget how good Siwoo Kim was and how how young he was when he. he he's an absolute prodigy, wasn't he? Yeah, he, mm. he won the Players Championship about a million years ago at yeah. Sawgrass. Yeah, four-time PGA Tour champion at the age of twenty-eight. One of those wins came in California, IA, the twenty twenty one American Express, which we'll never forget. That was a good weekend. Steve. That was that, that was, was that weekend. was joyous. That was joyous. This is the joy the golf betting can bring. Never mind last week's frustrations. Let's talk about the joy. Um, <laughs> and he has also won a Corn Ferry Tour event in California. He loves this part of the world. He spent his late teens living in the Golden State. Uh, his record in California generally is excellent, and he's been on the leaderboard in the Genesis Invitational. A lot of times in his career, he's come to this tournament either lacking form or lacking fitness or lacking both. You know, Siwoo's had loads of injury problems in his career. The first time he turned up at Riviera with both fitness and form was in 2019, and he finished third. Finished third, outscored everybody in the field in the final round, ended up two shots behind the winner. The 2020 Genesis is worth mentioning as well. He turned up for that, having missed the cut in his previous five tournaments. After that Genesis, he missed the cut in his subsequent four tournaments. But in the Genesis, he finished 37th. So even amid one of the worst spells of his career, he still managed to bank a, a healthy check at Riviera. He hasn't made much impact there since, but I love the way he's been going quietly about his business this season. Solid golf, slowly but surely improving. 25th in the Amex, 14th in the Pebble Beach Pro-Am, 12th in the Phoenix Open last week. He's footloose and fancy free now, Jack, lest we forget because of that medal in the Asian Games, you remember? Oh, yes, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, he, got, yeah. He, he won the medal in the Asian Games. He's secured his freedom to be a professional golfer for as long as he wants. He hasn't got to be a soldier. National service is gone for, for Siwoo Kim. And I think he's relaxed and more PJ Tour titles are inevitable. Uh, and I think they'll come at a course where accuracy is fully rewarded. He's so solid from T to green now. A natural fader for, for Riviera. If we can get a half-decent week out of him on the greens, Siwoo can join you can't, ladies, and your Morikawa's on the leaderboard. 
I think that I think everyone has that player that you know isn't isn't one of the world's best and slightly unconventional. They just love watching and that see. Yeah, you think he's an absolute delight once he gets going. He's a born entertainer because he's he's mm. he's so unpredictable. He, you know, he's, he's headstrong. He does crazy things on the golf course. Um, but um, yeah, he's mentally mentally tough. I'd say mentally mm. tough because he, he's had to be from a very early age. He's been. He's been sent over to America to become a professional golfer. His dad sounds like a bit of a sort of um, you know, pushy dad, I think, is the mm-hmm. uh, is the term that's used. I, I've seen interviews with Siwoo. I felt quite sorry for him. You can see his dad's sort of tactic with Siwoo is to tell him how rubbish he is and tell him that he's got to, he's got to work harder than everyone else to get. You know, and, and poor old Siwoo's got a bit of an inferiority complex around the elite players because he's had this drilled into him. You, you know, you're, you're rubbish. You're rubbish, Siwoo. You're rubbish. You know, you've got to work harder than everyone else. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a modern parenting technique. But, no. Um, it's one that has sort of got results to a degree. Um, but, yeah, 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 yeah. But he is better than he thinks he is. Was yeah. it Was it not Cantley who he, it, it was, he won, so see, we won the Amex, didn't he? Was it Cantley yeah. that was second? That? Yeah, yeah, Cantley was coming yeah. with a late, late That's rattle. Right. Cantley was coming with a late rattle and then see, we managed to repel him. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll never forget that weekend. Um, but yeah, I think Siwoo, Siwoo needs to believe in himself a little bit more. He's, he's he's better than he thinks he is. He's better than his dad tells him he is. Um, and um, yeah, he's the best outsider. He's the best outsider this week, if you can call him an outsider. But obviously, in a field of 70, you're not going to get many uh, with lively chances at 51 plus. No, well, I love the sound of that. Let's um, let's talk through some of the some of the market leaders, Steve. Scotty Scheffler, obvious, obvious favourite, seven to one. You've got Rory in there as well. Out of those two, um, who would you m- be most keen to put on your bet slip? Well, we're seven to one Scheffler this week. Uh, he's never won in California. He played a lot of golf on Sunday, as we mentioned. He looked jaded coming up the 72nd mm. hole. I think it was a mixture of fatigue and sort of dejection because he knew he'd blown a, a golden opportunity with three holes of terrible putting. Um, the putting let him down all, all week, really. He was top for greens in regulation obviously, again, yeah. uh, obviously. 44th for putting. Um the shape of Riviera suits him, uh, you know, natural fader. Yeah, I expect him to place again. But the opposition, of course, much stronger this week. And I much prefer the bigger prices about about my ones. Did you say, say Rory, did you? Yeah, Rory yeah not... Rory, I mean, a lot. you know, there's there's people out there who will just back Rory blind. What's the reason for not doing that this week? I don't think nine to one's particularly good. Um, he's never won a PGA Tour stroke play event in California. Doesn't usually play much on the West Coast. I never like going near him in, 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 in on the West Coast. Riviera is the one he does usually play. He's got a decent record round. Yeah, he's never won it, but decent record. But he was pretty awful at Pebble Beach last time out. Did yeah. you watch him there? I saw yeah, a lot yeah. of him in the early coverage there, and he was putting terribly and looking. Yeah, I don't think he likes. I don't think he likes the greens on the West Coast. Yeah, I can definitely live without McElroy. Yeah, and then you've got a couple of players, Steve, sort of around about eighteen to one. Justin Thomas, Ludwig Aberg. Victor Hovland, I know, is a, is a little bit shorter than that. They were, I'm sure, will attract interest this week. Yeah, yeah. Victor Hovland's a fascinating conundrum these days, isn't he? He's 12 to 1. Firstly, we should mention in the US amateur at Riviera, he was terrible. He was 10 over par for two rounds, mm. nowhere near qualifying for the knockout stages. But his Genesis record is much better. Form figures are 5, 4, 20, natural fader. But he hasn't played much this year. 22nd in the century. 58th at Pebble Beach. It's been lacklustre stuff. And that decision to switch co- coaches in the close season, do you remember we mentioned that? He, mm. he, he sacked his coach after the most successful season of his career, um, gone with Grant Waite. I just, I've lost faith in Victor since hearing that news. I can't believe he did it. And um, it seems very odd. Um, so, yeah, Hovland, no interest. Um, Shafele, Xander Shafele is next in the betting. He withdrew from the Phoenix Open last Monday. Um, reports of a wrist issue. So immediately mm. with a with a wrist issue, you're not going to be playing at 14 to 1, are you, the following week? Um, and then Max Homer is the next one down. Loves Riviera. We love Max Homer. He's a former champion here. You'd massively respect him if he was in good form. But his last two starts have been terrible. Pebble Beach and Phoenix, two places you'd expect him to do well. He's flopped. You know, he seems to have lost his A game in an inopportune time. Uh, Ludwig Obert, you mentioned, obviously his ball striking was amazing at Pebble Beach. I think he would have won that tournament had he got the final round in. Um, his putting has been up and down. He doesn't seem to like the West Coast Greens. Um, he struggles on them. Um, but 
um, yeah, tournament debut, tournament debut. Um, there, there were reasons. There were just enough reasons for us to resist him. But we will be backing him at some stage this year, and we will be winning on, on a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. That's uh, that's the top of the market covered off. Um, a, a quick word on Tiger. I see he's released a new line of merchandise, Steve. I thought I'd see you kitted out in Sunday <laughs> red. Maybe maybe you can you can have laser eye surgery and head to toe in in Sunday red on the next big win. Yes, yes. No, I will. I'll, I look forward to getting some Sunday red. Um, yeah, yeah. He, I suppose he's moving into business now, isn't he? I mean, anyone backing him 150 to one this week yeah, is, is very optimistic. I mean, <laughs> Tiger Woods has never won at Riviera. Like it's the one tournament on the PGA. Really? So, yes, it's the one. Oh, it, 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 it's, it's just the one tournament, the one regulation tournament he's never managed to conquer. Um, but um, yeah, I think yeah, I don't know what to expect. I hope he makes the cut. I mean, he, he, maybe the reason he's made this cut so easy to make is because he knows he might struggle. Um, yeah, I think he'd be hovering around fiftieth place. Um, let's hope he makes it. Well, if he doesn't, you've told your hero he must hang his head in shame. So <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, what, what's coming up for in, in your life the rest of this week, Steve? I just need some sleep, Jack. To be honest with you, I've had back-to-back triple headers, and I yeah, back triple headers can can really tire you out when you're following all the action and you know, you're, you're heavily invested. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm so pleased. There's only one tournament this week. This is a chance to recuperate. We got two next week. We got three the week after that. There's another triple header creeping up at the end of the end of the month. So I'm gonna try and take it easy and get some sleep this this week. Uh, but I've got Tommy Tiger on my own. My, my, my wife and my daughter are off on their on their travels again. So it's me God, and Tommy. They are jet setters, aren't they? Those two. <laughs> My goodness. Me. <laughs> well, yeah, they, they they like heading to Brighton. Um, yeah. So we're going to. Um, yeah, yeah. Me and Tommy Tiger are alone. We'll probably watch the football. Yeah, Weymouth for Weymouth for playing well. Uh, we're yeah. going to go and watch. We're going to go and watch Weymouth play uh, Worthing, and then uh, uh, probably spend a lot of time down the snooker club. But I need to I get was some sleep. Say, yeah. The trouble is, Jack. These Californian events. We must warn the viewers. It's yeah. the usual. It's the usual problem for UK. UK fans. Hopefully, the PGA Tour will get the tee times as early as possible because they are they are more aware of ratings worldwide TV ratings now. The PGA. Mm. Tour. There was a tournament the other day that they I can't remember what it was, but they brought the tee times further forward than usual to get that UK audience. So um, if you're watching Jay Monahan, um, I would like you to make the tee times as early as possible over the weekend so um, UK viewers can enjoy it. I promise it, to watch. I promise to watch, Jay. I mean, in, in the world of hybrid working now, Steve, I know you've adopted home working for quite some time. Maybe maybe you should fly yourself and the and the family out to America and just base yourself there. That would make it easier with time zones. Blimey, go and live in California. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? That's an idea. There's an idea. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd go Florida if I was going to go anywhere. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I've only been there once, but I absolutely loved it. I, yeah, I could happily relocate to Florida. But um, yeah, yeah, I haven't got enough bunts for that right now. <laughs> there we go. As you said, two tournaments next week. We've got the Mexico Open and we've got the Kenya Open. I always love the Kenya Open for some reason. Magical, isn't um, it? Magical. <laughs> it really is. Um, just recap your selections to end things off, Steve. Uh, who are you picking for the Genesis invitation? Patrick Cantillay. Colin Morikawa, Siwoo Kim, my lord. Very good. Steve, thank you very much. If you're backing any selections in the golf this week, please remember to do so with money that you can afford to lose. We will see you again next Tuesday for another episode of The Sweet Spot.